Hello, audience. Welcome to the 2020 series presented by the New York Film Academy. The 2020 series are creative conversations with visionaries about craft, creativity, and collaboration. So we're going to do 20 minutes of shop talk, process talk, craft talk, and then 20 minutes of answering questions from you guys, the global audience. So please use the Q&A toggle here to write in. We have an amazing guest today. Oh, besides the way, I'm Liz Hinline. I'm creative director and filmmaker and director. Um, and today we have amazing visionary director that I'm just so impressed with, Steve Fuller. So hello, Steve. Hello. Hi, Liz. Greetings. How are you? Greetings. Hi, everyone. So great. Um, I just, you know, your work is just really is so eye catching and so exciting. I really want to share it with the audience. So we're going to play the two, um, two of the spots you sent me and then let's definitely chat about that. So okay, Charlie, okay. Let's yes. play some stuff and take it away. Okay. You really know how to capture the beautiful people. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. In, in a really, fun. really exciting way. So my, I'm really curious. So when you got the boards and or the scripts for these, did these look and the scripts boards uh, audience is what the ad agency or the client, whoever, they, that's their initial way of their sending ideas to directors to direct the spots. Mm -hmm. Did the final spots look anything like the boards? Um. <laughs> You know, the Cosmopolitan one, um, I don't remember seeing any specific boards. There was, a, there was some, there was a lot of reference imagery, you know, fashion photography and stuff. Um, the men's warehouse, um, no, not really, you know, the, definitely there were some boards and, um, but, but I think we really, you know, my objective to, was to really elevate that brand, you know, <laughs> see what we can, you know, and I had a lot of good responses from that one. You know, people were very surprised that we were able to do, you know, to push that far with Men's Warehouse, you know. I, um, I remember on a scout telling the creative director, um, you know, I want, I want people to watch this ad and be expecting a Tom Ford logo to appear at the end, <laughs> you know. Oh. But, so we really, you know, you know, and, and some other people have been like, you did that with Men's Warehouse. So, so yeah, always, you know, trying to push the, the, the envelope. Um, Cosmo, Cosmo was, um, that was a really fun one to do. And um, 
you know, we had, you have, you always have this sort of, um, you know, certain balancing that you have to do when you, when you do a treatment and, and present ideas, you know, you, you want to be doing, you don't want to be, and you kind of have to suss it out on the call, you know, like how, how much can you, can you add, you know, do without, you know, making them feel like, you know, you know, how much, how much do you add? If you add too much, they could feel like you, you didn't love their script or their idea. And if you don't add enough, they could sometimes feel like, well, what is this person bringing to the table? You know? 100%. Um, and so in that Cosmo ad, just cause technically it's really fun. What can you give us about under the hood? So was the concept it's going to be in a hotel room? You're like, no, it's going to be in like six hotel rooms. Yeah, the concept was yeah to kind of enter these different spaces and like what goes on what goes on behind closed doors and you know Cosmopolitan right from the when the hotel opened and their very first commercials which Tarsem Singh did um, they kind of established the brand being like that you know they had a great line just the right amount of wrong mm -hmm. and. You know, they, his commercial had these great surreal moments, you know, like an elevator opens and there's a million, you know, bunnies <laughs> running out and there's a bellboy with, with his whole uniform and no pants and, you know, like pool shots. So it was, a, it was a, I remember seeing it and really thinking this is a, you know, a great way of, of, sh of showing this brand. I, I understood the brand right away. So, um, without showing all the details of what a casino resort looks like, um, I thought it was more important to show the feeling of that. So, so what we did was, you know, and there, there were several other ads before the one that I did. So mm -hmm. I was, you know, there was a lot of pressure to kind of keep that, that vibe going. And, and I, I knew it was going to be a great opportunity. Um, and yeah, this was a sort of a, a travel into the into these different rooms with different color schemes and different characters and to kind of show you almost that anything can happen there, you know. Um, and the uh, the idea, we used the te techno crane to basically telescope the arm through these rooms and we stitched, we stitched all the scenes together um, in post. There's a little bit of visual effects um, on that first hallway. Right. Part of that is shot, part of it is CG. Um, and then the idea to sort of pull back at the end was kind of a last minute idea that I had, but really, really makes the spot, you know, to kind of revisit everybody and, you know, we had to reuse, we had to reuse our talent, you know, because there was only X amount of principles that we could get. So everybody, everybody in the spot winds up in the room at the end, and then you kind of pull back and you, you know. And was the pullback live or was the pullback in post? The pullback was all we did in every in every set. We did the same sort of pullback with the techno crane. So we knew at the same rate. So we knew everything would kind of stitch together. You know, and this was all um, on the stage, not live. Yeah, it was all on a stage in Brooklyn. Wonderful. It's, it's and, they, and the rooms look great. They look totally believable as like three dimensional rooms, not. Yeah. Small, yeah. Somewhere you know. we, we we built two two rooms, we reused one of them. So we had three sort of hard structure rooms, um, three walled rooms with, you know, floor and, and uh, I think we added the ceilings and posts. And then, uh, and then a couple of like sort of sets that float in, you know, there's a bathtub set and a sort of hoop uh, acrobat um, girl um, that were just sort of like abstract kind of sets. So yeah, it's, it was, um, you know, I could get to use some of my design skills and and some of my some of my um, you know know how with when it comes to visual effects shooting mm -hmm. and and um, and post production and all of that. So it's a great it was a great opportunity and yeah. Oh, it's fantastic! It's really fun and and I'm a lot of questions on that, but. So coming from a, like a hardcore design background, especially at a, such a great company like Imaginary Forces, what was it about lot, like transforming more into live action that was alluring to you? Well, I was always, you know, that was sort of, sort of the next step into uncharted territory, you know? Mm -hmm. And as when I was a teenager, um, 
you know, in high school, I would always watch MTV and watch music videos and even making the, making the video and, and, um, you know, see those guys like, uh, you know, even, you know, Fra Francis Lawrence and, and Brett Ratner and, you know, even Joseph Kahn uh, making, making videos. I actually pitched against Joseph Kahn uh, last year. Um, so I always had that in the, in the back of my head, like, wouldn't it be fun to direct, you know? And also even as a kid watching like behind the scenes of like Steven Spielberg movies and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, you know, it was a kind of a faint dream in my mind, I guess, ever since I was a kid. Um, so as I got into design and, you know, graphic design and, and, and advertising and print design and, and kind of led me into, into television and, and motion, um, that, that, re that became more like insight, you know, like the idea that, and at Imaginary Forces, as we grew as creative director, designers and creative directors, um, a lot of times we would get the opportunity to, to shoot also and do everything under one roof, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a gradual move into that area. Um, but I, I, I still, I still use my design eye when I, when I frame shots and, and light live action, so. And then how, um, how did you find dealing with the live action talent? And was that a skill set that, that came naturally or that you had to work at? Um, I, it came, it comes somewhat natural. I mean, I, I I'm, I'm, I feel like I can talk to, you know, I can have a conversation, you know, my, my wife says that you, you, you can, you can talk to anybody, you know, <laughs> like I'll start conversations and, and, and uh, I don't have a problem with, with that. So working with actors is, is, is part of that. I, I will say that like, um, I'm much more comfortable now that I've been doing it for, I don't know, 10, 12 years, you know, and I've gotten really good at, at, you know, finding the right person, <laughs> you know, or group of people in a casting, you know, when I see, when I see, when I see the, the, the first round of casting, you know, all the videos, mm -hmm. I'm much faster to sort of pinpoint who I, who I think is going to be great. And, and, and good at sort of helping guide the agency to that to those people, and then um, allowing them to really shine on set on the day. Um, so, and and really, you know, making them feel comfortable. It's it's a whole it's a whole bunch of little things, you know, that make the difference. And yeah. allowing, I always like to to sort of plan plan, you know, eighty five percent. And then leave that other 15, you know, for happy accidents and, and, or for some, for an actor to do something unexpected or, you know, um, you know, finding different angles or letting some, some thing that I hadn't planned on with light, um, you know, happen. You know? Exactly. And yeah, I was going to comment on your casting because you had, you have really good faces that are, that are very, specific and memorable. Thank you. And it doesn't feel just like commercially, you know, it feels like an, another, like you're creating another world. And I was just wondering, is that, do you reference like, it, this is also part of the question is, is how do you fill your well? Where are you getting your sort of creative, like if we want to make something modern and cool now uh, client, where's that modern and cool ideas coming from for you? I mean, I, I, I just, I don't think ideas come come out of the thin air. You know, I think I don't think, and I don't think any artists really, you know, invents the wheel. I see art and commercial art included as a gradual progression. You know, I we build we build on stuff that we've seen. You know, and now I'm now I have you know several years of things I've seen along my life that are still always swirling around in my mind, you know, things that I've wanted to try, um, things that, you know, just inspiration, you know, um, 
and I'm not afraid of trying things that, you know, that I see. I'm not afraid of like, oh, that's been done, you know? I, I don't think like that. I think like, well, maybe that's been done, but maybe that, you know, with a new spin on it or through my eyes, it always ends up being something different, you know? And I always like to bring something new to the table um, and really make, you know, the commercials I work on as good as they can be, you know, that's the, that's the job, right? Um, so. And, and do you feel like, because we were talking about, you know, it's so fun to try new things and do new things, especially in the commercial world, do you feel this pressure to sort of keep up with like, you know, what's the it thing now? No, I mean, I, I, I think, yeah, you want to stay, you want to stay current, you know, nobody wants to get old and I don't want to rely on, I don't want to rely on things that I know because that's a sure way to sort of get old and obsolete. You know, mm -hmm. I, I am always looking around for stuff and, and, you know, I have a couple of treatments that are being looked at right now where I'm, I'm proposing some equipment that I've never used that I've seen used, but like, you know, how will I use it? How will me and my DPs use it? Mm -hmm. um, has it been used in that environment? Um, so that's how that's how you stay young and relevant, I think, you know, and, and I, I, I just, I do still think that like, experience and knowledge and all of that stuff you acquire over your career. So I'm not really worried. And if I, you know, if, if I, you know, if nobody wants to hire me anymore for this, I will apply all of my talent somewhere else, you know? Exactly. Um, I so that I'm not really that, wor I'm not really that worried, you know? I mean, when it stops being fun, then, then, uh, then I'll find something else to do. But to be honest, I feel like I was born to do this kind of stuff. I love, I love the, I love the, the prep and the planning and um, you know, having all of the things that I can control and, ex and, and experiment with, and then also allow that room for, for things to happen organically, you know, f finding someone that's going to give you, that's going to bring some comedy to it, you know, even if it's just a face, you know, and, it, and it's funny because like I've, I've cast, I've shot in several different countries. <laughs> you know, I've shot in I've shot in Russia three times, and I remember casting this one this one guy for a phone commercial, and I saw him saw him immediately on the sort of tiles of videos. I was like, I was like that guy, <laughs> yeah. um, and I just knew that he was going to bring something funny, and he and he did. You know, the the role sort of called for a little slight a subtle comedy, and and he was perfect. You know. Um, and uh, I shot another commercial in Romania and like people were like, that looks, that guy looks like he should be in like a Bud Light commercial. You know, I was like, that's a, that's a Romanian guy, you know? So right. I don't know. I think, you know, and, and I say it to clients and, and agencies, you know, a lot of the hard work of directing is comes in the casting room mm -hmm. when you're, when you're, figuring out your equipment, location scouting, um, production design, you know, picking out the mm -hmm. styling, all of the little things, you know, that, that add up, you know, totally. Totally. That, are gonna like, that quilt. Yeah. Like that, that, yeah. And I, I feel like I'm getting better and better at it every year. Every commercial that I do, I learn from mm -hmm. and improve, you know, and it's funny. Cause like, I, that cosmopolitan spot, like, I know that there's a shot of the girl at the beginning is wearing like an earring that's like super interesting. And she's wearing these little like pink, like uh, lined little stockings on her high heels. I remember all of that stuff because I picked that out, you know? I approved that. that. I picked out the paint color of those walls. I know, I know the commercial like inside and out, 
you know? Um, so, so yeah, exactly. you know, it's, it's, it's still, it's all the little things that add up. And, um, and just how we, you said you have great relationships with your DPs. And I just wanted to ch chat a little bit about what you look for in a, in a partner, in a cinematographer and how, what cinematographers can do to be good partners, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to operate the camera or I don't know all the, all the technical stuff about lights, but I don't really want to be thinking about that. I want to be thinking about all the other things. So, but I know I want my cinematography to be amazing, no matter what kind of commercial it is. If it's something that needs to, that's really a beauty thing and the lighting needs to be perfect, or even comedy commercials where a lot of people used to kind of, you know, not really concern themselves with that kind of lighting. It's always been, it's always important to me. And um, so, so having those, having those, it's a, it's, it's my main collaborator. You know, my cinematographer is my main collaborator. And I know what we, you know, I know what I want it to look like. And once I lock in that DP, um, it sets me at ease knowing that it's going to look great. And then I can concern myself with a lot of other things, right? you know, right. Um, performance, what the props look like, the production design and all that other stuff I just mentioned. Um, I mean, that's not to say that, yeah, we're always, you know, me and my main DPs are always trying to push, push ourselves forward too, you know, try things that we, you know, that are new to us, you right. know, new lenses. And, you know, we last, the last, uh, the last project I shot with my main DP, Pete, um, was a infinity car um, spot, a longer sort of web film demo. And, um, and, you know, we went, I said, I want this to be much sharper, like crisper than normal. And we, I want to like go a little bit more commercial with like a sort of a rim light, mm -hmm. you know, I still want it to look natural. And, you know, I'm getting more like, as I get older and more experienced, I get more like, you know, detailed about what I want, you know? And, and we always surprised ourselves, you know? We were looking, we're look, we were looking at the, 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 at the DI, you know, with the DIT looking over the footage after the end of every day. And we we're just like, this is, this is, you know. That's awesome. It's different for us, but we love it, you know? And same, same with that Con Air spot that you mentioned um, when we talked before, you know, that was like, you know, a different look for us, but we just kind of looked at each other like, you know, we, we dialed in a look pretty quickly and, you know, we committed to it. Right. You know? And it was not our standard thing, you know, it was like always trying to venture into new territory. That's great. And also having like other travelers with you that are willing to do that. Yes, definitely. You know, and I, I think like, I think as a director, this is what I've learned over the last 10 years or so. It's like half of the job is to inspire the rest of the crew, especially the, the, the department heads um, in a way that makes them not in, a, not in a, a way that's like, you know, if somebody's slacking, you know, not up to, up to your standards, it's not like, you know, being mean or anything. It's more about inspiring and like, you know, making them want to do their best work for you. You know, that's a huge part of it because when you have, when you have people that are really like, you know, happy with their work, then it makes the shoot go much better and, and the, and the footage comes out better, you know? 100%. And it gives everybody confidence, you know, when, when you're encouraging them, do more, go bigger, you know, don't be shy. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid. Production is. Yeah. yeah I, I was doing, a, I was doing a shoot, for Amazon uh, in Germany, and I had a, a German production designer, great guy, and we were shooting a, a scene in a museum, and he showed me like a sketch, like a like a little rendering, and it was like, I I, I didn't like it, but like, I sat there and I just kind of gave him I gave him some ref some more reference, and we talked about it, and then like he came back and it was amazing, and I was like. I could see that he was 
he was satisfied. Like he was happy that he pushed himself and he like, you know, and that I was happy. And it was like, that's, that's the, the collaboration that I really love. And, mm -hmm. and, and having that and seeing everything in all the departments, the department heads, like if they have that same sort of spirit, then all of their work kind of collides together and becomes what is in front of the lens, right? 100%, 100%. I'm gonna jump in. We have like a bazillion questions here. So I'm gonna jump in because people want your, to drop your knowledge. Gabriella <laughs> asks, what makes a script good for you? Uh, Steve, the one that you say, wow, I really wanna direct this. Um, I mean, always when there's a good concept or, or a twist or, or a, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, yeah, you kind of, there's no one way to put it, you know, <laughs> it's like you, you kind of see it when it's there, but like, if there's a, you know, some visual storytelling or, or some, some um, chance to really capture human emotion, I think that's always important. You know, we talked about it earlier today, Liz and I, like, I think it's always important to have a little bit of that human connection, even if you're selling something very slick or, you know, you know, that's, that's advertising, right? Getting somebody to engage and feel like I need to go there or I need to buy that or, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people respond to other people most yeah. more than anything else. So, um, that's a great, that's a great thing to, you know, it's interesting with that and, and that you really nailed it with that because you can have all the slick CG, you can have, you know, the new backgrounds that they're having in the post thing and all that, but if it's not, if there's not a human connection that gives you an emotion, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, yeah, whether it's just, you, you want it to be engaging on some level because at the end of the day, nobody wants to look at your ad, right? I mean, that's, nobody wants to look at advertising. So it better be really good. You know, it's gotta be interesting and, and, and why not push things, you know? I, I mean, I, I think another answer to that question is like, not so much like when you see a board or a script from an ad agency, whether it's good or not, I always like to see the potential, if you can somehow see the potential in the script, Mm -hmm. You know, nothing is throwaway. You know, I don't have the luxury of being, you know, I, I just, I don't think I'm at the level of being, you know, where I'm getting scripts thrown at me and like, I have, you know, my choice. I, a lot of my career has been, you know, taking something and, and seeing the potential and, um, and fixing the, fixing the problems, working out the kinks and bringing, bringing something new to it, you know? I mean, if, if it's, and like I said, it's like a balancing act, right? You, you, if you, if it's really, you know, something that you don't feel is right for you, then you probably shouldn't do it. But I, I like to think of myself as a problem solving director. So there's no, re, there's no commercial that's like, <laughs> come across my desk that's like, no, I can't, that's, that's, that's helpless. You know, the patient's dead. <laughs> not, yeah, there's no, I, I don't ever see that like that. So maybe it's just me being kind about it, you know, like, or, or wanting to stay busy. You know, I'm, I think it's important to, to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very rarely turning anything down. That's like, 100%. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to always stay busy because even if it's a small job or, or something that you know I've done before. I, I still think that there's always I always learn something from every job, you know, yeah. and it's a chance to test something new or just improve your skills. Dolce asks once once a brand hires you, what is your pro oh, this is actually pre a brand hiring? What is your process to come up with a concept? So so do you have like a certain methodology that you that you've? Um, I mean, I'm not usually the usually the bigger concept is already sort of figured out from the ad agency. Um, you know, prior to engaging with directors, they're mm -hmm. usually green lighted. Um, so so for me. I'm like, yeah, in a way it's like, you're a, a little bit of like a repairman, <laughs> you know, like 
assessing the situation, right. um, uh, seeing if there's seeing if there's anything that needs to be fixed, and then seeing the potential, then mm -hmm. seeing seeing opportunity. How can how can we make this uh, better than they may have? thought or, or think of think of ideas and or scenes or shots or moments um, that they had they hadn't shot thought of mm -hmm. you know and use your previous previous experience to 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 uh, to help it help it you know become the best it can be do you ever do testing or do you do like or to get an award do you do something pre visualization -y thing um I used to do that. I used to do that when I was at Imaginary Forces more. Um, when I had like, I had some, I had designers working under me and animators um, and editors that it was easier to, to pull those people together. And, you know, I, I did a, I did a Reebok pump when they first reintroduced the Reebok pump and I wanted to make the sneakers like living breathing little animals and stuff so me and me and the animator uh i told them to wear wear black all black and bring in some black gloves and on a black piece of plexiglass me and him sort of puppeted the the sneakers around um releasing the air and getting like tight shots mm -hmm. with our with our camera that we we had in the, in the studio and um and we put together a whole animatic and that's what won the, won the job. So um, I've done a couple of things like that sort of back, back like 10 years ago. Now I'm, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll still do little shoots if it's something that I feel like it could really win. Um, but most of the time it's, it's treatment and reference and just being very clear with stating your approach, you know? And who, like what artists, it could be fine artists, it could be filmmakers, like what inspires you right now? What What's getting you excited? Well, I'm, I'm always, I watch a lot of TV shows. <laughs> I watch a lot of movies, you know? Um, you know, there's touches of, you know, there's touches of things that I've seen throughout my whole life and everything that I do in a way, you know? Um, and definitely there's graphic designers like Saul Bass is, was always an inspiration when I was a designer and there's elements of Saul Bass in the Mad Men title sequence and um, the Pacific. Um, uh, now, I mean, my hero, my hero commercial directors, I, I always look at like, there's a lot of, a lot of them are English actually, like, like I love like uh, Sam Brown and Ring and Ledwood and and Dougal Wilson and um, those those directors that are sort of at the top of their game obviously and and can kind of work in lots of genres actually you know um, Danny Kleinman who did the title sequence for some of the bond, James Bond films you know um, just there's 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 hundreds you know uh, well, we talked also about your fluidity, that you're so great at going from genre to genre to genre, um, and that and that interests you. And you can see that in your work, and it's also by the references that you're giving, like it, it's a cross-pollinization of stuff. Um, yeah. Do you find, is there like, are you interested more of something in the genre or some type of aspect now that like a couple of years ago you weren't as interested? Did something evolve for you? No. I'm interested in all genres <laughs> and I feel like I can, I feel like I have enough knowledge of like post-production and, and, and um, visual effects shooting that there's nothing that I, that's come across my desk. That's like, how did they do that? You know, there, there were like some, like, you know, early on when I was in my twenties, like when Michelle Gondry um, and, and Spike Jones and Stefan Sednui were, were sort of, coming out with awesome music videos, we were, you know, uh, we would watch some Michelle Gondry videos and try to like 
figure it out. You know, like, how do you, how do you do that? Especially that Kylie Minogue video. I remember like, right. Figure it out, you know? <laughs> um, so like there's, there's like, you know, he kind of, he's a big influence. You know, you were asking about influences. I mean, not my stuff doesn't look like Michelle Gondry, but like Michelle Gondry was, was an influence in just getting into the, into the, live action world, you know? I mean, he did so much. There's a there's sort of a ripple effect from Michelle Gondry that we're still feeling today. 100%, you know? 100%. Um, and Spike Jones and, you know, Spike Jones is still doing killer stuff. Um, those guys are amazing. And and so, yeah, so so there's nothing that that I feel like I can't do, like, mm-hmm. or can't figure out or figure out how to make better or, you know, so there's, there's not like, there's not any one genre that I really want to get into. Um, I'm dabbling, starting to get in a little bit into car commercials, but like we talked about earlier today, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get pigeonholed and, and I've, I've been successful so far in not really getting pigeonholed. I am getting a lot of casino jobs at the moment, but, um, pitches, but, uh, you know, I don't want to be known for one thing. Um, and so I tell anybody who is selling me, um, to sort of think of me as a problem solving director, not like, not the beauty guy, or he's the comedy guy, or he's the car guy, or he's the beer poor guy. I don't, I don't, it's too, my, my interests change too much, you know, like, well, that's amazing. You're able to do that, and and that's and 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 setting that sort of line. And you're 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 the you're like the girl that everyone wants to date. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, that um, go from here to there, but I think that's really important to set the pace as a director for your career. Yeah, I mean, I think you're this way. I'm a little bit more in control of my own destiny. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been a freelance director for several years now and yeah it's just you know there's there's trade-offs right i mean um i might not be considered uh for certain work because i am a freelancer you know like um i heard that recently like they don't hire freelance directors but i i see it as like I have a bigger net, you know, it's like fishing with a net versus, a, you know, a single line and a hook, you know. Um, there's just more, over the years, there's just been more boards, you know, come across my inbox and, and, uh, and, and then it's really up to me to like, you know, win them and put my best, best foot forward for, for my own career and for the people who rep me. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I don't ever look down on a job and think like, oh, that's a crap job, I don't wanna do it. I look at it as like, let me see what they're trying to do here. Right. Let me help them, let me help them do that thing that they're trying to do the best way possible. 100%. 100%. You, live, you you inspire them and you come in and you help elevate what they got. You're, you're, you're the engineer that's, I know this house looks structurally, uh-huh, but we're, we're going to make it great. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. My brother's an architect, actually. He was just here. <laughs> he just, just flew home. And um, yeah, we, 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 talk about, we talk about lots of different things. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's in a creative field that moves at like a snail's pace compared to our industry. But um, yeah, I mean, it's amazing to walk around. I walked around in a, in a school that he was, that was halfway under construction that he designed in Arizona one time. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> you're, you're walking around on some, in, a, in a physical space that was in your mind at some point and in AutoCAD. And now you have a, a, there's a construction crew building it and it could be here for 200 years or more. Um, the stuff I do is here and gone. He's jealous of my my work because, you know, in the time that he's maybe scheduled a meeting with the mayor, mayor's office, and or 
you know, had to run it through some board of homeowners or whatever. I've already shot, edited, it, it's aired a commercial, you know? And, and been probably like into three different countries at the same time, exactly. Yeah. So, but you know, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, same and kind of creative, we're both commercial artists really, exactly. you know? Exactly, it's, it's amazing. So Steve, this has been so wonderful and where can people, if they want to just look at your work, your IG or something, what, what do you feel comfortable with sharing, if anything? Most of, all of my best work is probably, is on my website, stevefuller.tv um, and my Vimeo page. Mm -hmm. um, I do some Instagram. I'm not a, I'm not a huge, I'm not constantly checking or uploading stuff to Instagram. I sometimes post like behind the scenes, uh, pictures, but yeah, my, my portfolio is on my website. Fantastic. Well, you've been amazing. I know people have been really excited to have you here. We had a million questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to them all. And um, well, thanks for, yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you much, so much, Steve. And right. New York Film Academy for presenting the 2020. Thank you. Be well. Speak soon. All right. Take care, you guys.